Ansel Adams used to say, dodging and burning are steps to take care of mistakes God made in establishing tonal relationship. Check this out. Look at the difference between this photo and this photo. Dodge and bird made it really come to life. Or this photo versus this photo. Big difference. Or check out this one versus this one. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Romini. I'm a French photographer living in the USA and I love teaching photography in a fun and simple way. Today, we're going to go deep in one of the most biggest secrets of post processing and retouching that have existed since photography existed. It's called dodge and burn. So let me show you. This is Ansel Adams and this is a very famous photo of his. On the left side, you have uh, the non retouch version and on the right side you have the retouch version you can see here it's very low resolution but you can really see clearly how washed out it is on the left side and on right out and Ansel Adam was not the only one doing heavy dodge and burning this is a very famous photo from James Dean in New York or Audrey Edburn in a cab and you can see uh, the circles is basically different value of making things brighter and darker. So what is dodge and burn? Dodge and burn is just the ability to guide the viewer into your photography by making some things brighter, which is called dodging or darker, which is called burning. Let's start with this photo here. Let me show you. So I'm going to go into the develop module and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my natural drama. So my natural drama is a five step process. In fact, I've wrote a whole book about it called the Lightroom Lightroom Drama, which you can get for free uh, if you click down under this video. And natural drama has five steps. Step number one, and you will see me do that on every photo, is first we take care of the exposure. Step number two is the white balance. Because you can't do the white balance until you kind of know what your photo looks like. Step number three is refining colors. Step number four, and that's what this whole video is about, is dodge and burn. And step number five is final touches. Step number one, let's do exposure. So on the exposure, I'm going to open the shadows. I'm going to bring down the highlights. This is a photo of the French Opera in Paris that I shot a while ago. Maybe not so much. I'm going to hold down the Option key on my keyboard or the Alt key if you're on Windows. And I'm going to move my black slider until I have about, I would say about that much of black points. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows until I start seeing something here. What you see here in blue and white is pixels which are 100% white. Okay, so uh, I'm going to bring that down until I don't see any of that. So let me click again on the black point. What you see here in blue is pixels which are 100% black. So you really want your photo to go from like very strong black to pure white, you know, both sides. So uh, you have information all over. Okay. Now on this one, I am going to boost a slightly easy exposure a little bit, but I do want to give it an early morning feeling to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, and that's just the basic, the next step, once we've done exposure and white balance, step number three is refining colors. So refining colors on this one, I'm, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower a little bit the vibrance. And then usually what I do is I go on the U first and I take this little tool here, which is a targeted tool. I click on the sky, I can go up and I can go down and I can change the color. In this case, I'm not going to do much. I might just go slightly towards blue more than green and then on saturation I can decide what I want to saturate or desaturate in this case I don't want to do much on saturation uh, I'm going to go on luminance oh actually not true saturation you see you've got a little bit of red and yellow so anything which is kind of warm I'm just going to boost the saturation it's not going to do much it's just going to make this a little bit brighter anything which is like gold and blue and red and I'm going to go to luminance and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to boost uh, anything which is red orange yellow, anything which is warm. You don't see much of a difference, but it is refining colors. Okay, now we come to step number four of the natural drama formula, which is the dodge and burn. It's crazy. So what is dodge and burn? Dodge and burn means you're making the photo locally brighter or darker. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is something crazy. I want to start with a bang and I'm going to turn all the lights on because I just when I got up that morning very early, they just turned off the lights and I missed it by maybe by five minutes. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do some heavy dodge, dodging. I think Ansel would be proud and I'm going to use a radial gradient or maybe not. I don't know. And I'm going to turn the CD light on exactly how they were. So I'm going to make a little circle here. Uh, you see, uh, here is my menu for the, that's the new menu from Lightroom with all the mask. And I'm going to call this one. Let's call this one. Uh, lights, city lights. Okay. 
And so I made a little circle and I'm going to boost the exposure on this one until I'm kind of happy. And then I'm going to right click on that circle. So let's select it again. Where are you? Here. And I'm going to duplicate that radial gradient. Okay. Radial gradient, ra radial circle. It's called radial gradient, actually. I keep calling it radial circle for years. I don't know why. Maybe I'm stupid, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna right click, duplicate, and then I'm gonna move the, the lights here. There's a lot of lights. So now I'm gonna accelerate the video because I don't wanna bore you, but basically all I'm gonna do is make this circle, right click, duplicate, and you know, as you go away on, on the smaller lights, uh, you need to uh, basically make it uh, smaller, you know, but I'm still using the same gradient and you'll see why in a second, it's actually completely magical. So let's do the rest of the lamps really quick with this circle. All I'm gonna do is duplicate and just put it on all the lamps. Okay, so now we, you, you can see all the circle here. And if I look at this, if I play with the exposure, everything, all the lights turn off or on. Isn't that crazy? And I can even make yellow. And because I duplicated my lights, you see, with one slider, I can turn off and on the C lights. But I'm not finished. Now, I want to do one more. I'm going to go here, and I'm not going to take a brush. And I want to make a brush where the feather is 100%, the flow is 100%, the density is 100%. So a very powerful brush. And I'm going to boost the exposure. And I'm going to boost the uh, the yellow. And I'm going to... Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make big... Big brush, I like big brush. And boom, I'm gonna click just to make them glow. So you have to be careful like that. And, and uh, I'm gonna zoom in. So to zoom in, I hold on the space bar and I click and it's gonna zoom in. And it's gonna go really fast. So I just wanna make this lamps glow, basically. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna make glow. I wanna make them glow. So you have like a basic light and then you're making them glow. And if you want to move around, you move around the space bar and it's magic. And it's kind of magic, magic. It's amazing. I am a better retoucher than I'm a singer, unfortunately, but I love to sing. My wife hates me for that, but that's life. Okay, cool. So now the lights are on and same thing here. You can decide because we just brushed if you want to go crazy or if you want to not go crazy. I don't want to go that crazy. I just want to add a bit of glow. And already it's making the photo come to life. You see, dodge and burning is all about going in details, going wide, going in details, going wide, going in details, going wide. Let me show you what I mean. So now, um, if these lights were turned on, we would get a little bit of lights here on the floor. Oops, sorry. So that's a big mistake, Command Z to, un to undo. Once you're happy with the brush stroke, what you can do is you can rename this. I can rename this uh, Glow on Lights, okay? And now I'm gonna make another brush just for the reflection. So I'm gonna brush here, a bit of exposure. Oh, I need to, I didn't press the, okay. I gotta click plus, then brush. All right. And then my computer is starting to slow down because it's using a lot of battery, a lot of battery, a lot of power. So I'm gonna add a bit of light, a bit of yellow, not so much maybe, just a bit. And here is a really cool trick. Um, so when you have a brush like this, you can hold on the option key and the brush is gonna become an eraser and you can use your middle mouse to make the eraser big or small. And I can erase the brush stroke. I only want it to pretend that it's glowing here on the floor. And then if you made a mistake, you wanna redo it, you can just do that and do that. Redo it. Okay, uh, and you have to be careful because there's a bit of a feather on even on the, uh, on the thing. So you see now it's like, if there was lights coming here, so maybe it's a bit strong, so let's lower it. Okay, now I'm ready to do some big dodge and burning. So I wanna make the sky a bit darker. I wanna make um, the ground here a bit darker because everything is kind of like the same, like my eyes is going everywhere. This is the whole idea of dodge and burn. You don't want your eyes to go everywhere. I want the eyes to go inside. So now I'm gonna do big dodge and burn. So first I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna lower the exposure big time. But you see, it, there's a problem. It's lowering the exposure on the building. I don't want that. I only want the top of the sky. How can you do it? What, what's the solution? Well, you can do is click on the mask. First, you can give it a name if you're well organized. Call it sky. And then you can go here on sky and you can say subtract and select sky. Now we're using AI. 
So I'm going to detect the sky. Yet at first it's doing nothing. That's because we selected the sky. So now if you look at it, what's happening, it's kind of stupid. But uh, if I go here and I go see before and after, what's happening is the reverse of what I want. Like the buildings are dark and the sky hasn't changed. We don't want that. So all we have to do is go here and go to invert sky. And now we got a problem. Uh, I don't know what's going on here, but something wrong with it. Okay, let's do it again. That can happen. I messed up. So let me do it again a little faster. So linear gradient. Okay, normally it works. Minus exposure. Subtract. Select sky. Then you go on the sky layer and you invert it. That's what I meant to do. And now it's working. And you see by doing that, What's happening, it's making the sky darker without making the building darker, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. Let's do some more uh, burning. Burning is when we make things darker. So I want to burn uh, also the bottom here. Let's burn it. Let's burn. Paris is burning. Yeah, we have that. Good. So now already, that's the big dodge and burn. Now, I want to make some big dodging. So we did all the small things. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to use a radial gradient and make a big gradient because what do I want at the end of the day? I want people to look inside of my photo. So I'm going to make this building, which is a star, the story I'm trying to tell with this photo, and I'm going to boost the exposure a little bit here so that now where it's like shining uh, on this. But I want to do the same thing for the very top of the sky because I can. So I want to make the top of the sky more dramatic. So I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to add some exposure, but I only want to add it on the sky. You see, like if the sky was very bright here. So same thing, I can subtract this time a brush. Okay. And then make sure you use the middle mouse and I'm going to now, because I'm subtracting a brush, I can unbrush that. I only want the glow to be on the sky just to make the sky more interesting. Okay. So now look at the difference. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so you see that's the photo with basic retouching and that's where we are now. Quite a difference, I would say. So I want to go further. Remember, you go small, you go large, you go small. So let's go small again. I want to turn this windows on. So I'm going to I'm going to click and go on this windows here and I'm going to brush here, brush there and then brush here and here. And I want to turn up the lamp. So you see, I, I went too much on the wall. Not a problem. You hold on the option key. What you see in red, when you see red, it means you brush, but nothing has been done yet. And as soon as you start boosting the exposure, for example, boom. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then once you're happy with a brush, what you do is uh, you just create a new brush. I'm going to create a new brush, brush, brush. And I want to turn the lights on also on the opera. I want to pretend that there's some lights here. Okay, so I'm brushing here and boom, adding a bit of light, a bit of yellow, not so much. Okay, too much on the column, so I'm going to erase on the column like this. Okay, maybe make that also, the entrance, a bit brighter. And uh, it's small, but you know, Leonardo da Vinci used to say, it is details that makes perfection, and perfection is not a detail. You know what I mean? And then, um, and if you, the good thing about this is that if you're like, yeah, I don't know, it looks weird, uh, you can always go here and uh, I can move my mask thing. And I can, like, for example, I think my lamps are, uh, the glow is a little too strong. No, the, maybe not the glow, but the city lights are too strong. So I can select my city lights and go a little lower, you know? And then uh, maybe I can go also on my glow on lights. I mean, Ansel Adams would have loved having this tool. You know, I, I, I couldn't find a quote, but there was another quote where he talks about, like, when somebody is saying, you know, do you retouch, you not, your photos are very natural. He would say, he would often say, have you ever seen a black sky? Because a lot of Ansel Adams photos, the sky is black because he's using a red filter and in post-processing, he's making his skies very black, which is absolutely not natural. You know, again, you know, we are here to correct God's mistake on the tonal range as per what he says. Okay, I want to make the foreground slightly more interesting. So I'm going to take another brush and I'm going to go here and just brush here and just add a little bit of light, just a tad. Don't do it too much. And the main, the main way to know if you went too far or not far enough is to look at this photo in like in a couple of days 
And if you ask yourself, did I do it or did I not do it? Um, if you hesitate a little bit, you know you went too far. If you can see right away where you brushed, you know you went too far. Okay, and now I'm ready for the final uh, step number five of the natural drama, which is the final touch. I think on the final, I'm just going to increase contrast. And um, voila, check this out. So I'm not going to do much on the final touch. Usually that's where I do my sharpening. That's where I can maybe go in Photoshop and erase the, you know, the pigeon and this. I'm not going to bother doing that. Also, we can try actually, not true. I'm going to try the new, brand new um, content aware fill that just came out. Let's see if it's going to work here on the pigeon and there. Yeah, they came up with this new content aware fill uh, that you have like, um, it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, I, I actually made a little bit of a mistake here. I should have gone larger. Let's see. Boom. Yes. You know, so that's the final structure. So that's the five step of the natural drama. Let me show them to you again. So step number one, exposure. Step number two, that's just the summary of my book, which you can get for free on this video. Step number two is white balance. Step number three is color adjustment. Step number four is dodge and burning. And step number five is a final touch sharpening. So sharpening on this one is very easy. I shot this at 100 ISO on a tripod, so it's got a re, it's, it doesn't have a lot of noise. I'm just gonna use my good old formula, which is 10 of noise reduction. 90 of sharpening. So the, the, the amount of sharpening plus the amount of noise reduction must be equal to 100. It's, I invented this and the masking around 60. Masking what it does, check it out, it's really cool. What you see in black is not gonna get sharpened. You don't wanna sharpen the sky. You only wanna sharpen with a bit of details. That way you get a photo that's kind of very sharp but it's not too sharp. I don't like photos that are too sharp. I mean, this is already a very sharp photo. Okay, let's jump on our next photo, which is, I just came back from Iceland. This is a beautiful view of the Western Horns, which is my favorite beach in Iceland. I waited for the sun to set. I took four photos. They're already in a panel, but the raw file hasn't retouched. So step number one of the natural drama formula is what? Exposure. So let's do the exposure. Open the shadows, look at that. Bring on the highlights. So when it comes, when the sun is in the shot, I never bring on the highlights too much because I like to keep it glowing. Like the glow, maybe not the shadows, not so much. We're gonna do the black and white points. So hold on the option key and boom, move this about that much and that's gonna be our black point. And then we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna do that. Now you see I'm burning the sky, so I'm, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Maybe add a bit of contrast. Okay, I think I want to bring up the overall um, of the image. Yeah, just a little bit like that. Yeah, not too much, just like that. Okay, so now I got the exposure. Step number two of the natural drama formula is white balance. So white balance, well, on this one, I think I'm just gonna go to like shade maybe. Shade, shade on you. Yeah, shade is good. Shade is just a default, no, shade is too, see, shade is not good, sorry, because I lost all the blue in the sky. So let's go to daylight, and maybe daylight, yeah, daylight is good. Daylight is good, but I, I, you see, it's, I lost too much blue. So, you know, I'm just gonna bring back a bit of blue. Okay, just a tad, and maybe add a bit of magenta, because I'm still a bit of an addict, but don't tell anybody. Okay, so now I'm, I'm ready for the big dodge and burn. Okay, so first we're gonna burn the photo with a linear gradient. Uh, the top of the sky is too bright, so I want to bring that down. So I'm making a bit of a gradient, and I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit, and I'm going to add back some blue a little bit. Not too much. Not Be very careful not to add too much blue. I do not like when the photos have, where the sky is, like the blue in the sky is unreal. And then for the bottom of the photo, the bottom is already pretty dark, so I don't think I'm going to touch that very much. Um, and now... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to touch out very much. So I'm going to go here, click plus, and uh, I'm going to take a big brush, big brush, and I want to make the sun shining everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to boost the exposure, a bit of yellow, and I'm going to go from the sun all the way to the end of the beach. Okay, now that's too much. Uh, so I'm going to press Command-Z, I'm going to redo it, I'm, and um, I'm, what I'm going to do is so create a new brush here, create a new brush, 
I'm going to see the flow and density is too high. So I'm going to put the flow and density in the 70. Okay. And um, all I want is the photo to really have a, like a focus. And the focus is really here. I want people to look at the sun and look at here. So you basically, where you want people to look at, you make brighter. And what you want people to not look at, you make darker. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, I would say. What do you think? Okay, then I'm going to go and take a brush. And um, this time I want to make things darker. Uh, but I didn't want to use a gradient because I only want to make this part darker, which is kind of the opposite of that. Uh, maybe this a little bit darker. I think that lamp, the thing is too dark. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And um, I feel uh, that I need to brush a little more. Uh, bring a bit of darkness in some parts of not everywhere, but just bring a bit of darkness in a part of the mountain just to make it more interesting. Okay, good. Now we're ready to make some really nice light details. So I'm going to add a brush. So you're just adding brush, you know, small brush, big brush. Go for it. You know, practice, but you have to do it in a way where it's spectacular, but you don't want people to see where you did it. So on this one, I'm going to zoom in at 50%. Hold on the option key. Look at this photo. Is that a crazy photo? You got to come with me on a workshop one day in Iceland. You'll love it. Okay, I'm going to boost the exposure. I'm going to boost the yellow. And then I'm going to add a little bit of exposure in yellow here. Voila. And then I want to do the same thing here. I'm going to add a bit of yellow. I just want to make some of the, this is actual gluten. All of this is wheat. Yeah, this is not a gluten-free beach, I can tell you that. It's black sand and gluten. And I'm not doing it everywhere, but you see how I made it shine. And if you want to see what an individual brush, you know, you have a little eye, as I showed you already a couple of times. And you can see, I really want to make the, that like the sun was shining in here. The sun was shining. And then I'm going to add another brush. And this time I want to open some of the shadows, but not as much as I did here. That's why I'm doing several brushes. I know it's crazy, but that's the price to pay to get a good photo. All right. And now I'm going to add some light here and some light there. And I'm just reshaping the light. I am reshaping the light. Um, I think on this one, I want to go back to my overall contrast and just boost the contrast heavily. And then maybe add a little bit of saturation. I want this to be really majestic and very colorful because that's how it felt. Yes. So you see, that's without dodge and burn. And that's with dodge and burn. Look at the difference. Without, with. You see how it's getting a lot more the eyes inside of the photo? I love it. I love it. Okay, one more time. One more time. This photo. This is a, a, like a glacier lagoon in Iceland. So on this one, remember the first step we're going to do. We didn't do the last step on, uh, on the natural drama, but I want to focus really on dodge and burn. So I'm going to open the shadow. Step number one, we're going to do the dodge and burn. So I'm going to hold on my black my option key. I want to do my black point. Yeah, I want that much black. Then my white point, okay, something like that. A bit of contrast. Okay, on this one, I'm going to lower the vibrance. See the vibrance is here. I'm going to lower a bit. Of, I want to make it sort of a, not black and white, but quite. See, normally it's like this, and voila. And now I'm ready to do my big dodge and burn. So big dodge and burn. I'm not going to refine the colors on this one. I'm just going to go straight because there's not much colors going on. You know, the, you don't have to do every step of the natural drama, just the one which is appropriate for your photo. So on this one, I want to make the sky darker. So I'm going to start with big dodge and burn. Okay. And then for the bottom, because there is ice, I'm going to use a brush. And I really want to make the stone darker around the big ice. So I'm going to lower the, I'm going to paint here. I'm going to paint first in red around the rocks. Paint around the rocks. Rocks, 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 paint around the rocks. Okay, and I'm going to lower the exposure like that. Yeah, rock and roll. All right. It is very good. It is amazing. So I'm making that darker. And you know what? I'm going to go even more crazy. I'm going to add a linear gradient. And I'm going to make even that darker. Yeah. You still want to see some of the rocks, but just a little bit. Okay, cool. And now... Let's continue on doing big dodge and burn. 
I want to make a big radial gradient here because I want people to look inside of the glacier. Okay, the star is the glacier, so I'm making a big circle here. My computer is starting to lag. Look at that, and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some light here. All right, and now it's time to make things shine. So I'm gonna take a brush, and uh, this time I'm gonna go smaller, uh, flow in density in the 70, and then I'm gonna go like this. Yeah, I hope you read my book, The Natural Drama. It's, uh, it's a very short book, and I try to make Lightroom actually super easy and just give you like a, a framework. One, two, three, four, five. You should try it on your photo. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Okay, cool, look at that. Now I really made this little ice stone, uh, ice cube uh, really shine. So on this one, I think I wanna add more brush. Oh. When I'm happy with a brush stroke, I'd rather be safe. And so I, I wanna add a little bit Maybe, I don't know if that's gonna work. I'm just gonna pre, just a little bit more light here in this part of the image. Like, I love the reflection. Yeah, something like that. Don't make it too definite, but that, yeah, something like that's kinda of cool. I think you see my sky is a little too dark. So that's a good thing because it's non-destructive. I can go here and make, and make that a little higher up. And I kind of like this. I kind of like this. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, I think I made my ice cube a little too bright, so that's fine. I can go back to mass 5. I can see here, I have a little preview, and I can just make that a little less strong. Again, totally non-destructive. On this one, I think I want to do something crazy. I want to add a little bit of clarity, which I never usually do, and lower even more the saturation. Maybe make the overall photo a bit brighter, maybe. Something like that. Okay, so let's see. So that's the photo without dodge and burn. And that's the photo with Dodge and Burn. Isn't that a crazy difference? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave me a comment. Tell me if you like this kind of video. It's, they're a bit longer, but it encouraged me to do some more. Read my book. And I will see you in another video. Also, don't forget to like this video. It really helps. If you can like and comment, share this video, get the book. It really helps me to produce this kind of video for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you're going to do dodge and burning on your photo. And you can always post them on Instagram and tag me at, at photo search so I can see what you're doing on photo search. Say hi on Instagram. And I will see you in another video. Au revoir, mesdames et messieurs. Au revoir.